Good morning or good uh, afternoon. Uh, we'll uh, start uh, this uh, 3D training name from Combine to Surgical Guide. We'll have 40 minutes uh, in front of us. We'll see a lot of uh, different things, very interesting things. I will start with a presentation, uh, what uh, we could do with uh, 3D software. And uh, also I will show you how to manage uh, the software itself huh? from the beginning means from the cbct to the creation of the surgical guide just before to start who i am i'm jean-michel kepa i'm the technical service manager for the company or one d and uh, also the training and cbct 3d made for that uh, company and i really enjoy to be with you today uh, to show you what we may do with this uh, software and our device for sure. I start uh, with the presentation of the uh, software feature, uh, briefly, how to move the uh, different uh, plane like sagittal, coronal, axial view, how to draw nerve, etc. Presentation of the uh, software feature. And also we'll see the patient's tour in for action. We created this uh, concept to show how to really check all the side of the patient within four quick actions. We will see also how to trace the mandibular canal, a very easy way to trace the mandibular canal. Also how to take a measurement. We also see the famous panoramic uh, reconstruction uh, Sometimes you may heard about curve MPR, the curve uh, along the arch, how to draw it, how to use it. You'll see how to create a PDF report, very easy to manage. For sure, we'll see the implant placement and the prosthetic project. And we'll see, well, the different way of getting a STL file with a numerical camera scanner or from a plaster model. We may use a plaster model directly on the device to recover a STL file. And also silicone mold. We may also scan on the CBCT itself, the silicone mold. We'll see also the matching from the STL file we get from a numerical camera or a plaster model. Uh, we may match to the CBCT itself. And also, for sure, we'll see how to create the surgical guide itself. In addition, we'll see the face scan. And the face scan is used uh, when we communicate with the patient himself or herself. It's uh, today very, very useful to have this uh, function. Now, we are going to start with the software itself. When we open a case, a 3D case, we have this uh, three view and the 3D view here. The three views, the coronal, sagittal, and axial view. When we take the line, we're able to move inside the volume. And this line, it's a red color, I read on the sagittal view. If I move the blue line, I read the coronal view. We may rotate around a point, like this. And also, we may move the 3D view and do some uh, things like uh, cropping the 3D view. Because if I like to work only in one area, we're able to crop the 3D view. Um, we have also on the top some uh, icons. This icon uh, gives us the possibility to do different actions like uh, changing the view to go to the curve, this icon here, this is for the matching, we'll see how to use it. This one is only 3D view. We'll uh, also see some function like this. This is uh, to help to see the outline of a 3D object. Uh, we will see later how it works. Some icons like this, if I like to show the 3D view or not, and some different kind of features. Also some function like this, 
that uh, could be helpful when we like to reset the position at once, like this. Also on the left side, you may see some uh, stamps. The first stamp we have when we open the software is a filter area here. Filter helps to change the brightness and the contrast. We have a small window. If we click on it, we have the same thing. We have some uh, area to collect the 3D object, an area named surgery that helps to redesign or to design a 3D object or surgical guide, measurement area, implant area, drill guide area, picture area, works, wax up area, text on a surgical guide, okay, airways, and well, cephalometry. We won't see this uh, function today. Well, I'll just uh, go back to that uh, uh, function here. First step is to check the patient within four actions. Okay, we'll check first this area here, and then that area, that area here, and that area here for action. This is very fast. Each time you do a CBCT, it's made a quick tour uh, of the patient. I start from the axial view here. I align to the bone. And you see on the right top here, the sagittal view. We have some function that able to see the lines or not. I just use control plus wheel, and I make a tour on this side. You may also pick up the directly the red line, and I move inside my patient. This is the first step. I check one side. Then I go on the opposite side. I also align to the bone. And we also move left and right in a way to check inside my patient. You may see some things. The bone is very thin on that area here. OK, it was the second step. Now we are going to see the third step. Third step, uh, we go on the incisor area. I go on just on the top uh, of uh, number one. And you see on the right side, I see the profile of my teeth, number one. I go in the middle of them. I align to them. And you see on the left side, the coronal view, my number one and number two at once. And I just move backward, forward to check number one, number two, why not we may go to the number three? This was the third step. Fourth step will be for sure to go on the mandibular area to also align from the middle of the tooth here. And you see at once also the number one, the number two. And you may move backward, forward. This is very fast means after each CBCT, I recommend to do this small check in a way to quickly check the full map of your passion, for sure, if you use large volume. Um, now, the next step will be to check the mandibular nerve. Um, we have a specific technique for that, and uh, it's very fast to find it. First, we align to the bone. While aligned, I see on the sagittal view here. And from the coronal view, I will try to find the foramen. This is a small hole on the bone here. Well, I just move the blue line in a way to find the foramen. And now we see the exact position of the foramen. While we found the foramen position, I go in the middle of the nerve. And you may see on the right side, on the sagittal view here, you see the nerve start to appear. The last action is to turn around the point here in a way to align my nerve. And you see the nerve is perfectly aligned. And now the next step is to draw the nerve. How to draw the nerve? We have a small stamp on the left. 3D object. We have a special icon named Create Nerve. Now I created a 3D object. And each time I will click on the view, I will 
add points. We are able also to move the points, to readjust the position if desired. And you also see it start to appear on the sagittal view. Then I will continue from the sagittal view. I have to click on the small icon here. It's like a small end with a pen in a way to draw on my view. Each time I click, I'm creating a point. We may readjust if necessary. I always prefer to be on the upper position. When it's finished, I just click on it and I say finish nerve points. My nerve here is drawn. Blue color, uh, I will change that color. Personally, I prefer to have a flashy color like green or yellow. It's for me better to see it correctly. This is a way to draw a nerve. Means always the same technique to align to the bone, find the foramen, go in the middle of the nerve, you just turn around the point here and then you align and you find easily the nerve. Next step will be to do a measurement. On that area, everybody could see one tooth is missing. Now this is a 46, um, and we will measure that area here. First, I align in a way to be more or less parallel to the crowns, and I will measure that area here. And that area here, this is what we could see here. Means we are going to measure. On the left side, I select the measurement stamp, we have several icons. Most of them we use this one on the bottom, point to point measurement. Click on it and I click on the view. Now I have a first point. I click at the second point. I may also take the point and move it where I want. And you see now the measurement. The measurement is collected here. It's like a library. I move the stamp if I don't want to sit in the middle. And I also measure that side here, the thickness of the bone. This is an area where we like to set an implant. Well, measurement is easy like this. Uh, and we may measure on each view. Next step now is to draw a curve. Remember that function to reset the position of the different views. I just click on the hand to stop to measure. I go on the mandibular area. This is the area where I like to work. Huh? I like to add an imprint on that area, 46. I change to that icon in a way to select the panoramic view. I just click on panoramic curve that is off actually, and we add the curve. We may select the green point in a way to move the curve, in a way to align to the arch. We have another possibility that is to draw by hand the curve like this. That's the same. On the bottom, this is what we call the panoramic reconstruction. I may change the way of uh, viewing things, like uh, adding sharpen in a way to have a clear image. And on the right top here, you see this view is the exact position of the yellow line. This time I will place my yellow line on the desired area. And this is the area, remember, where we like to add an implant. And we have the possibility to select a different kind of view. Two views like this, six views or 12 views. And we see millimeter after millimeter, the distance between two slides is one millimeter. We may read the value here, SL is one millimeter. From that, I may register uh, some images inside the software. We have a picture area here. This is some profile images. I may remove that images if I don't want them like this, and I will add this picture here. This is like a camera tech picture. I give a name. You may have comments. Say, okay. 
And now you see on the left side here, I registered my image. And we may register several images if I like to change the view to sagittal view, like this. I will select this time only one view. Okay. And I will also take a picture from that position. And you collect all the data. Now, how to uh, create a report? I go back to the Corona view. I want to export that views here. We have a function name print report. I may give a name, address, additional information, and I select the number of views means from 25 to 36 this time. And now I'm creating my report. I have a view like this. I should say print. In reality, I don't print. This is just a way to save. So report here. Now my report is created and registered. Just open the PDF file and you see all the different views that we registered from the image area. This is a PDF, very light, very easy to handle, to manage. I go back to our 3D case. Now, the next step is to add an imprint in the 46 area. Well, I just have to select the desired area. 46 area here and I right click and I say add implant. I select a desired implant, this one, okay, and I will also click on add wax up. When I do that, you see my view is uh, changing now, uh, my implant on the coronal and sagittal view and we have on the 3D view here, the profile of my crown. First, I will adjust the position of my crown. How to do that? Remember, I uh, show you that small icon here. I go on 3D object. I have now one choose number 46, and I show the profile of it, the outline. And what I just have to do first is to move my 3D object on the desired area. If I don't want to see my implant actually, because I will adjust its position later, I make it disappear, I disable it, and I just place on the right position my crown. I'm able to turn it from each view, to turn around the point in a way to align. We may also resize the object. And I will place my object correctly. This is a, a virtual crown huh, for sure. And you see on the 3D view here, we have the position of the crown. For sure, we adjust the position of it. Last rotation. And when I turn, you may see on the 3D view here that the object is turning around. When I consider that my 3D crown is correctly placed, this time I just curl a little bit the 3D volume because I don't want to see the upper jaw. If I don't want to see the measurement, you have a small icon to have my measurement to appear or disappear. And now I call my implant. And I am able for sure to place my implant correctly. You will see when I will release the implant automatically, the view are changing in a way to be always in a perpendicular view from the implant. And I just have to align my implant regarding the middle of position of my crown. Let's turn. Now my implant is well aligned. Well, 
Now, I just go back to the camera. Well, talking now about the different uh, STL file, we may use for sure a camera directly and uh, scan the patient. And uh, while we scan the patient, we get the STL file. We may also use plaster models like this. And we may put this plaster model directly on the device. Well, it's very easy. Uh, on the device, sometimes people they uh, does not know that we may use a, like a small plate like this. We just put the model on the plate. We put the plate on the device itself. We select the correct program exam from the device, and we emit X-ray. And then we retrieve the STL file. Wow. Now I will call my STL file from the CBCD. I will show you again the software. How to call a STL file. If you use a camera, it can be every camera from the market. We did some tests on different kind of camera. You may use every camera you have in the house. Well, I just say import mandibular 3D model file. For that example, I will uh, use uh, the scan from a plaster. That is very interesting. I will quickly load this case just to see the look of it. If it's an image uh, camera scan, the time for loading could be a little bit longer than a plaster model, for example. Okay. When we get the uh, volume, the, this uh, STL file, well, you see now our STL model, we have to match with the CBCT. I will uh, remove this object here and I will call also by the same way the plaster model that time. Plaster, STL file issue from the CBCT on the mandibular. I will do the same job. Well, the color here is gray. I will change it. Why not this uh, color here? and I will align to the CBCT. How to align, we have a special icon here. On the top here, this is our STL issue from the cluster. And the STL file you see is issue from that cluster model here. I did on myself. Well, I position uh, my uh, STL object. I also position more or less in the same way the CBCT like this. First, I synchronize the movement. After, I just have to select similar points on the top here and on the bottom. I choose some Q speed points. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then next point. Now you see that the 3D object is aligned. When it's finished, I just click on that icon here. Now my STL file is perfectly aligned with my CBCT. You may see the profile also of the object, means you may realign or readjust a little bit the position if desired. Reset the position call back my axis, I go on that area. I go in the desired area where I will work, I will create a surgical guide. Oh, maybe I have to realign a very little the position. Means my object, like we did with the crown, I realign, you see, smoothly my position. I may also check the profile of it and I also may realign smoothly the position of it. And you may probably see on that view here that the soft tissue are in contact with the profile of my STL file. While it is uh, now aligned, the next step is to create a surgical guide. First, I go on the 3D view here and I select 
drill guide. First, I don't need, well, now my CBCT, I just need to see my CL file that is now aligned. I select a tool diameter. This is a ring diameter. Okay, why not four millimeter? This is a height to stopper. This is the drill length given by the manufacturer of the implant generally. Uh, they provide also some tools like sleeves, drills, and the length is indicated by the manufacturer. Well, for our case, we know that this implant is high eight here. Make sure you extract things like the transparency to see the location of the implant. Well, let's go back to the drill guide area. I have to select the area where I will work. I just have to select the area where I like to add an implant. That area here, I may say upper or lower drill. And if I like to have a higher height, I change the value here. We have actually 10, we change it to 12. Look here, the impact of it. Okay, I will add one millimeter more. Okay. Now I'm able to create my drill guide. Well, we have a calculation time. Now my drill guide is created. Well, so drill guide is appearing here. Don't need to see my nerve. I just see now my implant here and the drill guide. Just additional information. If you like to redesign, why not a little bit? We have a surgery stamp here and we are able to creating opening windows. Create, redesign it. If necessary, I will cut the top area because I like to see from the top the position. And with this tool, very easy to manage. You see, we may easily redesign the drill guide. And this is our result. Just call back the CBCT. It will be the position of our drill guide. I just call back the camera. Okay, then you saw from the really beginning, from the scratch, the uh, two of the patient we did for action, how to draw the canal, uh, how to do measurement, how to draw a curve along the arch in a way to have one millimeter stamps, also to call a STL file from a camera or from a plaster model. And remember, we have the STL file directly from the CBCT, then we just create the object in a way to have the STL file of it, in a way to align. While align, you saw the matching area. While we align, we are able then to create the surgical guide. And just before to finish, I'd like to show you something. Um, today, we know that uh, the communication with the patient is very, very important. And uh, sometimes uh, well, patient does not understand the cost to put in place an implant. So it's a well, high cost and sometimes they don't understand. And this is a way for you to give a value to your work as a dentist. As you see here, we have a 3D view. We may discuss with the patient, say, okay, remember, patient, you came, you remember, we did a face scan together. And we also did a CBCT. And it was very important because you see here the area where it is necessary to add an implant. And uh, when we, we had this uh, implant, we just reduce a little bit the volume here. Why well, it's uh, very um, important to take care about the position of the nerve is uh, because we have to place the implant taking care about the nerve position. I don't have to touch it because if I touch it, oh, you may have a big disease. And uh, also we created a tooth and uh, with that tooth, we simulate the position of it, the right position regarding your arch. Why we did this, and you maybe remember, we did a scan also. And uh, the scan here is helping me to 
see the exact soft tissue in a way to create a surgical guide and to put it at the right place. And you see all these tools here, it's a quick way to explain to your patient what you do, and they will be probably impressed about uh, all these necessary tools, these uh, modern uh, technical tools, and uh, to recover for sure the smile. Okay, maybe you may recognize me, it's uh, me without glasses for sure. Okay, <laughs> it's a real study of my, myself. Now the time is uh, finished. Uh, I hope that uh, uh, it was uh, very useful uh, for you. And uh, remember that if you have any information, just send your comments to info at awandi.com. And it will be a great pleasure for me to answer you back. And if you have a need like a training or whatever, do not hesitate to send us through this uh, email, uh, info at awandi.com. Well, I really uh, appreciate to spend this time uh, with you. I hope it was really uh, helpful for you. Again, do not hesitate to uh, send your information or any comments. It would be a great pleasure. Thank you.